Motor racing enthusiasts compare them to surgeons. You have to be an enthusiast to go that far. But the top racing mechanics do treat the cars in their care as if the machinery were a valued patient. In the last minutes before a big race, they're all over the car, inside it, underneath it, tightening and adjusting in a last effort to squeeze out just that little extra smooth running horsepower. Jamie Gard and Graham Adams are the pit crew for the driving team of Frank Matic and Don O'Sullivan. The car they are attending is the Matic SR3, number one in the grid and favourite for the race. With a few minutes to go, the car's owner, Don O'Sullivan, discusses one of the crucial behind-the-scenes jobs, refuelling with mechanic Graham Adams. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going, to, him, yeah. I'm, going to go, I'm going to jump straight into fuel, whereas uh, yeah. Jamie might say, well... Yeah, it'd be important if both of you three. Yeah, that means nobody, right. nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, okay, well, we'll work it that way then. The young Bill over here with a yellow cap is going to be the other refueler, right? The Le Mans start is the first moment of truth for the mechanics as well as the driver. Although a quick getaway isn't all that important in a six-hour race, the starting line is the first opportunity for mechanical failure, and the stresses on the car are as heavy during takeoff as they are at any other part of the race. SR3 left the starting grid, late but running well, the crew could look forward to three hours of less frantic activity. For although motor racing is the glamour sport, there's not much glamour in the constant grind of work behind the scenes. Uh, this ranges from, uh, I suppose, an average day would be about 12 hours up to, uh, I guess, 24 hours. A 24 hour day for us is uh, really nothing uh, out of the way. We quite often do it. Well, what's the appeal of this job that will make you do things like that? Then? I don't know, to be quite truthful, uh, that's just one of those things that's in your blood and uh, you feel uh, as though you want to better yourself all the time and uh, you want to make sure that you can do the best for the driver and the car. We, um, we don't eat regularly and um, when we do eat it's usually hamburgers and fish and chips which is not very good, particularly when you're working say 12 hours to 24 hours a day but uh, we manage. Away from home for uh, probably six months, seven months of the year though, I live in Perth and uh, this keeps us away from my family which I do miss, you know, it's, this is the hardest part of it really. <laughs> Halfway through the race, the second burst of activity for the pit crew. The planned pit stop to refuel, change drivers and check the car. The stop was planned, the refuelling was fast and efficient, but then there was a totally unplanned development. To the despair of the pit crew, the car which was leading by nine laps would not start. Everything else was working beautifully, but the starter motor had jammed. So for the two mechanics, another part of the glamour job. Desperately pushing the heavy car in an effort to fire the engine. On the second attempt, the car fires up and moves out onto the track. A mishap like this, if it happens in the pits, is a serious problem for the mechanics. But what if something goes wrong out on the circuit at 150 miles an hour? I asked Graham Adams about the weight of responsibility he felt for a driver's safety on race day. Well, this is a very big thing and I'm very nervous before a race. I wander around and twitch and all this sort of thing. This all came from um, my last boss, who was Neil Allen, had an accident in Queensland, which I, I was uh, associated with at that particular time, had a uh, big crash, and he nearly was seriously injured. Um, ever since then, uh, I've been very, very awake up, aware of the dangers of it. And uh, I always make sure that uh, wheels are screwed on and etc. are all tight and ready. But I am very nervous about it. And it 
in a race like this, particularly like for six hours, it's got to be even better because it's, uh, it's a very long race. But for Don O'Sullivan, Frank Matic and the pit crew, it wasn't a very long race at all. Exactly one lap after the frantic rush to restart the car, Don O'Sullivan wheeled the SR3 into the pits again for the last time, with half the afternoon still to go. The push start a lap earlier had disqualified the car. The mishap finished the day's racing for the drivers. For the pit crew, it meant a burnt out starter motor, a shattered clutch, and back to the toolbox to repair the car for the next race.